headquarters in New York City brings you another episode of the Real Lil Show where I give my unique takes on the latest news in sports and pop culture. Subscribe to my channel at Real Lil Sports, once again at Real Lil Sports, and follow my Instagram at Real underscore Lil underscore Sports. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of news as of late in regards to sports and pop culture. And I got my dad here on his show with me to help me discuss this topic. Uh, peace and blessings, everybody. I, my dad, he told me basically a lot that I know of. You know, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be here right now because I wouldn't be watching sports, honestly. But um, definitely glad to have you on the show. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. And I'm going to start off with my opening statement to get this show started. And my opening statement is called, What's More Important? All right? So I'm going to start right now. A cat that has been, that has a great catalog of music, right? A famously known song, Trapped in the Closet, right? Who probably has girls trapped in his closet as we speak. <laughs> a guy who has a hit song, you know, Same Girl with Usher, who's probably holding a new girl under her own will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to stay. We have to stay to ourselves, right? What's more important? A pedophile who makes great music. Don't get me wrong, the music is great. Or supporting a guy that that's, you know, should get locked up, basically. Supporting for his him being locked up. All right? If y'all listening, y'all know who I'm talking about by now. I'm pretty sure y'all do. Right? And I'm referring to R. Kelly. That I want to know your opinions on this whole situation. Because um, you know, Countless people came up saying that, you know, he got a coat going on, a sex coat or whatever, or, you know. Absolutely. You but know, it, it's been going on for a long time. A you very know? long time. Very long time. And the only thing I'm going to say, if, if Bill Cosby got locked up for doing what he did, he was American's dad, and he got locked up for doing what he did all those years, Kelly got to get locked up for everything that he did. That's the bottom line, you know. You can't get around that. You know, young girls, 14, 13, 15, 16, it's unacceptable. You know, you got to pay for it, you know. He definitely do, and it's crazy because as the, the, um, these documentaries are coming out right now, um, his song Ignition is going up as far as um, views and stuff like that now, which is crazy because, you know, we always complain about, you know, if it was a white guy, for example, we wouldn't be supporting this guy. I mean, it would have been a whole march, get this brother in jail. But, you know, when it comes to our own community, um, with guys like that, that, you know, have great music, we still support them. And, and it's crazy because we do the same, well, not me, but a lot of people do the same thing with Kanye West. And we all know about his slavery um, was a choice statement. Exactly. So what are, what are your thoughts on that? People still supporting these guys. They lost. They lost. I don't understand it. You know, you got to stand up for truth. You got to stand up for righteousness. Exactly. And that's, that's what I got to say. I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I know we have a bunch of great songs, but honestly, after this, I'm, I'm not listening to none of them. Why? Because I'm not going to support a cat who should be in jail right now. He really should be behind bars. And like my dad just brought up, if Bill Cosby is sitting there in jail, um, you got to get this brother in there too. Because countless people came out. Um, since '02, two, all right, this has been going back since '02, two, and probably before that, probably we just didn't know about it then, and it's about time, it's, it's really about time they get this guy out of here, because, you know, hopefully this Lifetime documentary will um, help it, help him get yeah. arrested, but um, that's what I got to say about this situation, and it's time to get into the heart of the show, because we all know this is a sports show, and I will be coming back to a few pop culture topics later on in this program. But it's time to get into some sports, because that's why you tune into the show, because y'all know what I do. So anyway, the Rockets last night defeated the Warriors in an Old West shootout, 135-134, to as James Harden continues all right, his vengeance play in the league with another triple-double, all right, posting 44 points, 15 assists, and 10 rebounds. All right, Harden has now had 40 points in five straight games. All right, should Harden be the front runner for MVP? 
Uh, he's up there. He's up there. You know, he's balling right now. You know, he's on fire right now. That was a heck of a game last night. Uh, the Warriors gave it away, though. You know, you okay. can't. Can't you be can't, up by that much. You can't be up by six points with a minute left and lose the game. You know, KD, and Curry coming down, jacking up threes when he could have run out the clock for a little bit. But other than that, it was a good game. But Harden is on fire right now. I don't think he can keep it up because what's going to happen is, like the last couple of years, he ain't going to have nothing for the playoffs because, you do, you, know, he's, you know, you're doing too much right now and he needs help. You know, you can't do that for 82 games and then play 16 more playoff games. And that's what happened a couple of years ago. He ran out of gas. So hopefully he can continue to play ball like that. But it's not going to matter, you know, when it's all said and done, uh, nobody's messing with Golden State. You can I'll beat them a game here or there. You might get two, but you're not beating them four times, especially when Boogie comes back, Boogie Cousins. The Boogie Down Cousins. Well, I like the point that you just brought up right there um, about James Harden because we all know the history with James Harden. From Halloween on to April, the beginning of April, he's one of the best offensive scorers, if not the best offensive scorer in the game. But when it comes to the playoffs time, you know, we, we have an AP out for this brother. Where is, where is James Harden? We all know about that one series against San Antonio where this brother was, was not there. His body was there. MIA. But he was MIA. Probably talking he probably was in Miami all right it was it was that bad so I wanted to see if James Harden could continue to play it as well because right now he's putting up historical numbers historical numbers actually people were starting to compare him to Michael Jordan and stuff like that but can he sustain this play throughout the year because at the end of the day the playoffs is what really matters and obviously this Rockets team is in good position of making the playoffs they wasn't to start the year but they you know they won six straight games a 9 of 11, and they playing well. But can James Harden keep this up? That's, that's the big question here. So we have yet to see that. But, you know, that shot, that last shot, yeah, that was, that was crazy. That was you crazy had Draymond right Green on him, Klay Thompson on him. Two great defenders, by the way. Yeah. And, you know, what, they got to play, they got to double team better than that. I mean, yeah. you can't, that, we all know who was going to take that shot at the end of that game. Yeah. When you play hard, you got to take the ball. You got to take the ball out of his hand. You got to run doubles at him. You know, Golden State did well early in the game, and then they just let him off. And he just caught fire. You know, there's nothing you could do. I mean, it's good D. I mean, he's just a better shot. He's just on fire right now. You know, but do it in June. You know, do it in June when the game is, you know, when it means something. I want to see you do it in June. You know? And Austin Rivers, how about this cat over here, Austin Rivers? He, you know, he seemed like he's fitting it well with the team. I didn't know how he was going to fit on the team when he came. I do know he's a good three-point shooter, and I do know the Rockets are a three-point shooting team, so I knew he had that going for him. But we all know about the beefs that was, he had. With, with uh, Chris Paul. Exactly. You know, we'll see how that is when Chris Paul come back. You know, but it was a good pickup, you know, and let's see if we can continue. But you got to play D. You know, and we'll see. Right now, they might get to, you know, still young. Still, the season's still young, but they're going to be top two, three, or four in the West. You know, they keep playing like that, you know. So do you have any concerns? Should we, should we basketball fans or Golden State fans in particular be nervous about the Warriors? Or, you know, Boogie Cousins, who's set to be here nah, in three weeks. It's that, no, that's it, it's it. It's no over. concern. I mean, it's January. You know what I'm saying? We set a pace for the last four years. We've been like a dynasty. So, you know, right now, you know, everybody's bringing their best shot. It's the Super Bowl. It's the NBA championship. Every time they play Golden State, everybody's giving their best effort. So right now it's a little struggle, you know. But when Boogie comes in there, they're going to take off. You know, he's supposed to be back in about three weeks. You know, and once he makes his debut, you know, all the rebounds are going to be his. And he Nobody gonna, could guard him one-on-one. You can't one. guard him one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have to double him. And then when you double Boogie, you know, he's going to kick out to the shooters and they're going to be wide open. You know, and if you don't, if you're playing one-on-one, he's going to eat you alive. <laughs> so I'm not worried about Golden State. Like I said, they bored. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it happened to the, you can tell. all the dynasties. They bored. This, this, they know when the playoffs starts, that's when their season starts. So, you know, you know, I'm not worried about them. Anybody think that, if something wrong with them, break up the Golden State, they're going to be 
and for a rude awakening because when the chips is on the line, you know, nobody's beating them four. You might beat them once. You might beat them twice. You might even get them three games. But you're not beating the Golden State Warriors in four games, four out of seven. I can't see no team in the NBA doing that. I do believe that the Warriors are bored. It's clear as day that this team is bored because they know at the end of the day, no matter if they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight seed, they're still going to go to the championship and win it. But I would say this. Teams in the NBA has gotten better. And I do believe that's a, a little factor in why Golden State loses these type of games, along with them being bored. You know, you think about it. The teams has gotten better. You know, the Nuggets is a good team. The Thunder is an improved team from last year. PG-13 is doing his thing over there. Definitely. Um, you, the Rockets are starting to improve yeah. like how they was last year. The Spurs even. It's gonna, what I'm going to get into in a few minutes. It's a, it's a lot of good teams in the West. A couple of teams ain't going to make it. You know what I mean? Because they stack, you know, only eight go. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's a good year. It's a good run for them. You know, it's a good run right now in the West. And once again, like me and my dad just stated, before we move on to this next topic, no matter what happens, who get better, who's a two or the three or two through the eight, all right, if the Warriors is not that, the Warriors are still going to win. All right, especially when Boogie Cousins come back. It's over. All right, no discussion. All right, moving on. The Spurs last night spoils Kawhi's return as they demolished the Raptors 125 to 107. Kawhi blames the media for the rift between him and the Spurs, which I have a few things to say about that. But before I even get into that, what are your thoughts on this game? I mean, you know, everybody talked about Kawhi, you know, Kawhi this, Kawhi that. And I feel like a lot of people forgot, forgot about DeMar DeRozan, who actually got traded in this deal, who actually mm. showed up posting a triple-double. What are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, that was a good game. Uh, like I said, they forgot, on, forgot about DeRozan. He's the truth. You know, you just can't do it in the playoffs. But in the regular season, he's the truth. And uh, he was looking forward to this game. And, uh, you know, I was surprised that, you know, Lenny got booed like that, you know, called him traitor and everything, you know, because uh, he gave y'all a championship. It wasn't for him. Y'all wouldn't have won that chip. You know, he gave his blood, sweat, and tears for y'all. That sh Y'all should have gave him, a, you know, a standing ovation. Remember, he got y'all a championship. You know, things didn't work out, you know. You, you know, so, but still, y'all should have gave him some more love to me. You know, he wasn't, you know, traitor and all that. That was kind of harsh to me. You know, it didn't bother him. You know, he didn't play one of his best games, but he still scored 21. But uh, San Antonio was ready, and they, you know, they played good, you know. I, I actually disagree. I feel like the, the crowd had, had the right to boo him because at the end of the day, you know, they're competitors along with the players. You know, if you're playing on the other team, regardless, you know, we're going to boo that other team. But especially, you know, Kawhi being on once on that team, got offered the Supermax, over $235 million. Um, to leave that team the way how he did, no, expect, no explanation, really. We still haven't got an explanation up to this day. I mean, a lot of things was going on. The brother didn't say a word, and well, he just left. So I can did, understand why the crowd would boo. Yeah. I would have too. You got to read between the lines. He left because he said that the, the, the Spurs training staff misdiagnosed his injury, and, you know, that's why he was out so long, and, and that's why he missed the regular season. He said if the, if the training staff would have got the diagnosis right, he would could have got the surgery earlier or whatever he had to do, and he would have been back in there. So he felt some type of way, you know, and, and, you know, he had some animosity towards that, that they, you know, it's like you go into the doctor, you know what I'm saying, and, and the dude missed that you got cancer, you know, and then you go to another doctor, and then he said, man, listen, you should have came a couple months ago because we could have did something. He said, but I went to this, this clown over here, this doctor. He told me I was good. So, you know, that's, 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 that's how he feel. He feel that they didn't get it right, and it cost him, his, you know, a year. So he didn't want to play for them no more. You know, everybody has the right, you know, to, to move on with their life and, and, you know, and go somewhere else. But I got to be a traitor because I did that. Ah, uh, you know, that was a little harsh for me. Nah, I, I, as a fan, as a, from a, you know, I'm not a fan of the Spurs, but. If that happened to my team, I would boo him too. Just the competitive spirit. It's nothing yeah. personal. It's not like, you know, I hate you or we need to go find this cat and bring him out of his house and, <laughs> and burn cords. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's basically, you know, 
competitive. You know, I'm going to boo you because you're on the other team and you once played, you know, you played for my team back in the day. So I'm going to boo you. But it's nothing personal. Um, but you did see um, his mom getting into it with a fan or whatever. You know, stuff like that, you know, you know, that kind of crosses the line a little bit because you want um, his family to be able to come to see him right. and, and stuff like that and be able to be comfortable in that environment. Right. So that's the only thing I would say. But, you know, I think Kawhi shouldn't blame the media uh, because I do believe Kawhi should have, you know, been more talkative about the situation than he was. Well, you know, a, I know he's a quiet guy. He's a quiet guy. You know? I know he's a quiet guy, but, you know, you hear this, you know, it's a... Your teammates, you're not in communication with your teammates. That's one thing too. So if you don't commit, if you don't communicate to the fans, that's on us. We just don't know. We we in the outside looking in. But you, at least you got to communicate to your teammates because those are the guys that are going to war with you for 82 games in a regular season. So you got to communicate with them. Forget about us. You know we fans. We don't even. It's not mandatory, but. With your teammates, you got to do some, you know, communicating. And they yeah. felt betrayed yeah. in the situation. They, well, they just thought that, you know, he said that he was hurt, you know. And he said, I'm not coming back and I'm not going to play if I'm not 100%. You know, and the teammates, they, they felt that he should have been there in the playoffs. But if a guy, you, you know, you only a guy knows your body, his body. You know, if he said, listen, I'm not 100%, you got to take him for his word, you know. So Kawhi and Pop talked after the game. You saw it um, after the game. There was, you know, Pop flagging down. They was talking. And they seemed to be um, in good spirits, which is a good thing. Because, you know, you would think that, you know, drama like this, it sometimes could, you know, put a, a hole in a, in a connection, in a um, relationship. So nah. to see them actually, you know, being cool with each other and talking, yeah. that's a good thing. They was hugging after the game. Everything is good, you know. There's no hard feelings. But um, before I leave this topic, one thing to say, based on how the Spurs are improving now, um, getting back in the playoff picture, um, to see the, the Raptors being up there with Milwaukee in the East, needless to say, it seemed like this trade worked out for the, both teams. Would you agree? Or? Both teams got, got, a good, they got a good trade. It worked out for both teams. Usually when you do a trade, one team usually make better than the other team. But this worked out for both of them. It's going to help both of them. You know. Exactly. So we'll see what happens with both of these teams going forward. But moving on, um, news today reported out of the NBA that Jimmy Butler, right? The Jimmy Butler saga, drama saga, continues, right? It is continuing. All the time we hear something about Jimmy Butler. And I was a pro Jimmy Butler guy because I like his spirit. I like what he brings to the table. He's aggressive. You know, he wants to win. But sometimes, you know, you got to calm it down. You got to tone it down a little bit. So news came out today that... Um, he's ripped, you know, he ripped um, 76ers coach um, Brett Brown. You know, they're having disagreements. He's challenging him and stuff like that and his role on the offense. And right now, do you think Jimmy Butler's future with the team could be in doubt because of this? Because he's going to be a free agent after the season. He can opt down and become a free agent. Yeah, he might, you know, he might be one and done, you know, if they don't get it together. But, you know, you got to blame, you know, so I knew this was going to happen, you know, but the, you got to blame uh, that dude. Uh, Joel Embiid, but he threw the first shot, you know, a couple of weeks ago. He was saying, oh, ever since this guy came onto the team, my touches went down, my scoring went down. Y'all was winning, you know. Y you know, that you shouldn't have said that because the bottom line is to win, all right. He helps you win, you know what I'm saying. So why are you complaining that your touches is down and, and you're not getting the same shots when he's making your team better? So he threw the first shot. So now – now he got beef, and he threw the first shot, so now Jimmy going to be Jimmy now, you know, and that's why this other thing, you know, it just popped off what you just talked about because, you know, Joel threw the first stone, you know, so now this guy is saying, you know, a coach, and now it's going to be a problem, you know, unless they nip it in the butt, you know. I, I agree with that because if they were winning – I mean, they were winning. If they were losing, I could understand the scenario in which NB comes exactly. out and talk about his role. You know? But the fact that they winning – and, you know, they were in good position to come out like that. I was shocked. I was actually shocked about it. I'm like, what is this cat doing? What is this cat talking about? Because y'all winning. That's and, that, why, and that's what matters. That's why people can't play with Jimmy Butler because all he want to do is win. He don't care nothing about no shots. He don't care nothing about, you know, he want to win. And when, you, you, when other people around you got their own agendas, they want to score, they, they worry about their stats, 
You know what I'm saying? They don't worry about winning. Then you're going to have a problem with Jimmy Butler. That's just, everybody know him. They know how you get down. You know, he wants to win. You don't care. Timberwolves he's... wasn't ready for that. You know? Well, they, they, wasn't was, ready. they was young. They wasn't ready for that. They wasn't ready for you that. Um, I think Andrew Wiggins over there, on the reflect on the Timberwolves and Jimmy Butler being there, I think Andrew Wiggins has a lot of potential, but he doesn't always bring out that potential. I see it here and there. I see it where I'm like, yo, this, guy, this cat could be the truth. This, this guy, you know, would have been a top 15 player if he wanted to be a top 10, 15 in that margin because the talent is there for him, but he's lazy defensively. You know, and, and you don't, he, and he you doesn't don't, want it. And you don't, you don't want it. He doesn't have heart. You know, you got to have heart. You can have all the talent in the world, but you got to want it. You got to have heart. And they say, you know, the Canadian players, they don't have the heart. You know, they said most Canadian players, they don't have the heart for the NBA. You know, so Jimmy, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't put, no, you know, somebody, they don't have heart. They don't have heart. You can't make them have heart. Well, my thing is, I know, I know that Jimmy Butler, he wants to win. It's clear as day that this brother wants to win, and I do side with him a lot when it comes to stuff like that. But there is a thin line, in my yeah, opinion, you know, you know you can't, charging authority yeah, and you stuff like that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got you to gotta behave yourself because at the end of the day, you have to get along with somebody. So if you leave as a free agent in 2019, you go to the Knicks or whatever team you decide to go to, the Clippers, you can't go there and then start doing what you're doing over there at the end of the day. You have to find a, you know, a balance in which you do have to respect that other players don't want it the same way that you want it. Because at the end of the day, basketball is a team sport. So you may want it the most. You may look at your teammate and be like, oh, I don't like the way how Embiid playing. I don't like the way how Ben Simmons play or, you know, J.J. Redick or whatever. Not, to, not for them to be criticized, but you may think that or mm -hmm. you don't like their heart. But at the end of the day, it's a team game. So what Jimmy Butler needs to do is continue to work on his game and do what's the best for him, all right, and get along with these other players. You know, if they make a mistake, you tell them, yo, you made a mistake. If, you know, you, you, know, you sit and talk with them. You don't come out publicly and, and call them out and challenge guys. You know, you have to learn how to compromise. You got, you got to talk, you know, not through the media. And if he, you know, hopefully he gets that down pack because I'm tired of hearing this. All right, Jimmy Butler this. He's challenging that. You know, it seemed stuff. like it seemed like he was happy when he first got traded to the 76ers. Yeah, yeah. And you know, everything was going, but I think when Embiid said what Embiid said, I think that's why this all started to come out now. Absolutely. Cuz if Embiid didn't say nothing, I'm pretty sure we won't be hearing nothing about Jimmy Butler. Exactly. But those um those are my NBA talks and before I get out the NBA, there's one more thing I got to talk about. Here, and that's these early NBA All-Star votes that has been released. All right, in the Western Conference, LeBron James leads the pack with with a million votes, followed by Curry, Steph Curry, followed by Rose at number three, Luka Doncic, um, um, at number four, and Kevin Durant at number five. Do you have any problem with the order in this list? I mean, I don't see no AD in the top five. Well, I don't see no James Harden in the top five. The fans is the fans is voting, so that's who they want to see. You know, you see me. I voted. I actually mm -hmm. voted a few days ago, mm -hmm. and when I voted, I didn't vote for who was my favorite player. I didn't vote from a fan's perspective. I voted based on stats and based on who I believe was actually. Even if I didn't like the cat personally, mm -hmm. I put my biases aside and I said, "All right, Anthony Davis." It's right up there in, in the Western Conference, along with James Harden, all right? In, in the East, Giannis and, and Kawhi, all right? right. And plus, I gave Kemba some love. I do believe everybody ignores Kemba Walker because he's, it's unfortunate that this cat is playing for, for that team that he's playing for, you mm -hmm. know, in Charlotte. And he doesn't get no love because you don't win over there. Right. But he needs to get love too. Um, but, yeah, I did it from, you know, actual who deserves to be in the All-Star game. And that's what I believe that this should be about. It shouldn't be about your biases, all right? Derrick Rose is my guy. He's playing, what, he's the sixth man of the year by four this year, all right? And the most improved probably along with that. He might get two awards this year, all right? But you cannot tell me Derrick Rose has had a better season than Anthony Davis no. and James Harden. No, not at all. You know, not at all. I mean, you can't, you can't tell me that. And then another thing here is, 
you know, it, it's coming from a popular perspective. You know, right. the, it popular. Stephen Curry is very popular. We know that. And he deserves to be up there, too. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, but Derrick Rose seems to get a lot of love for the last couple of years. Yeah, he, and he definitely has been, well, he was top 15 in jersey sales when he didn't even play for two seasons, which is crazy. So I don't know what, what it is, but Derrick Rose has a fan base that's probably equal to, let's say, we talking pop culture and hip hop. You think about the fan bases there, the big fan bases. I'm not going to say Michael Jackson. That's a whole other level. But you do have Tupac fan base. You have all these other fan bases that you have with that routine and stuff like that. But in the sports side, Derrick Rose seemed to have a fan base because the jersey sales when he wasn't even playing and, and stuff like that. And I think it's more of they know what could have been yeah. with him. I think that's where it's coming from because what? he was one of the fastest elect yeah. electric point guards ever. I mean, he's making his way back. You know, he had that for years, the last couple, two or three years that he was out, you know, and he would think he would never play again. You know what I mean? But he's balling, you know what I mean? So everybody's showing him love, you know? They're showing him love. That's why he's, you know, he's getting no votes. And it's crazy because I wondered why. I thought that the Knicks should have brought him back because even when he was on the Knicks and they were trying to rebuild, this guy was averaging at least 15. He was averaging 15 points a game. You know, he wasn't as good as he is right now right. improving, but he was able to create his own shot and make and, and drop to the basket. A lot of guys can't do that, but the Knicks, you know, allow him to leave. And now look at this cat, man. He should be starting the league. Would you say, or sh should he be starting the league? Who, Derrick Rose? Yeah, Derrick Rose. Yeah, I mean he's back. You know, what I'm saying he can help a lot of teams. You know, you got, you know, he's playing good. You know, he's, you know, trying to get it back. You know, but before you go off this topic, I just want to make a statement. Uh, LeBron James made on this show a week or two ago about. I was just about to ask you about that he, too. He's Glad the goat. You that up. All right, let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, LeBron James is not the goat. The greatest of all time, the goat is Michael Jordan. He's the greatest ever. String up a pair of sneakers. You know what I'm saying? He got the championship six for six. You know the scoring. I mean everything. I mean LeBron James is the best in this era. But if you pass gas in this era, it's a foul, all right? When Jordan and the rest of those cats was playing, all right, they was getting knocked out the air. They was getting hand-checked, all right? This guy could just fly through the air now, and you can't even touch the guy, you know what I'm saying? That's the area we live in. I'm not knocking that. But please, <laughs> because you beat a 73-win team. Who were banged up, by the way. Okay, who was banged up. And who David Stearns gave you a stimulus package for suspending uh, uh, Green before game five. You would have lost that series in five. Okay? It wouldn't have went to game five. It wouldn't have went to game six. And you wouldn't have won it in game seven. All right? So thank Th David Stern for suspending Draymond Green, who should have been fine but not suspended on that particular play when you kicked, uh, you know, below the belt. You know, it should have been a, a, a fine, a heavy fine. But they, they suspended him and got one game five and six. So he wouldn't have got that championship. So he said that because he did that, he felt that he's the goal after he pulled that one off. But you got a long way to go. You know what I'm My saying? My thing is here, why does LeBron James have to say that? Right? Why do you have to say you the goal? Right? You still in your career. You still got much more to achieve. Why I say it? And I'm pretty sure he's saying it because in his heart, he probably don't believe it. And he's, you know, you had Danny Ainge with his comments right. about um, LeBron James and how he's taking the quote-unquote Donald Trump approach to sell himself. <laughs> yeah. Which I can understand where Ainge is coming from. I wouldn't use that quote, but I mm -hmm. understand. So, you know, I'm not going to knock him for it because I understand what he's trying to say. But some, mm -hmm. even though you can understand it, it don't mean it's right to say you know, but I do understand what he's saying. And I do believe that LeBron James is trying to sell himself as being the GOAT because he knows that there are some people other than the Manilios, the, the, the young people now, that actually believe that Jordan is a GOAT because the young people side with LeBron James. He got that under lock because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't go, you know, with all this social media and technology, people don't go back and reflect on, you know, stuff like that. Me, I was born in 97 and I... Barely seen Michael Jordan videos live. I mean, Michael Jordan live. But me being a historian, 
person that I am in sports and pop culture, I you know, there's YouTube. Go back. You know, NBA TV has all these games. And exactly. I don't even have to be born in that. I don't have to be exactly. living in that generation to know that Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Exactly. I mean, come on. You know? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. But, um, yeah, LeBron James, like I said, he has a lot more to achieve. But I don't even have him number two. If we're talking a list here, you know, the names that pop out to me is Jordan, Kareem. I feel like Kareem is one of the most underrated known athletes in American history because a lot of people don't even talk about this cat. And he could arguably be uh, right up there with Jordan. But, you know, Jordan, his clutch shots and stuff like that give him number one. But I go Kareem number two probably. Will Chamberlain is up there, you know. 100-point game. There's a couple guys that's in front of LeBron. I do believe LeBron James is in the top five. I'll probably put him number four around that. He's in the top five. But know, he's in the top he's five. He's in the top five. He passes you know, Kobe, in my opinion. There's some people know. that say Kobe's better. And I, hold, I held on to that for a minute. But when LeBron James did beat the 73-win Warrior team, I put him over Kobe. Not over Jordan, but over Kobe. That's good enough to get you probably like you know over Kobe or something like that. But one thing Kobe had that LeBron James didn't have is that, you know, he, that he, Michael Jordan ice in his veins. Yeah, he didn't have it. LeBron still, you know, I mean, he's better over the years. He got better. But in the beginning of his career, like 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 people say, all right, he couldn't buy it. You know, he didn't want it. You know, I mean, no early championship, he failed. You know what I'm saying? Jordan never fell from the gate. When he went to the championship, he won it. You know, Kobe never failed from the gate. When he went up there, you know what I'm saying, he was the black mamba. You know what I'm saying? But LeBron learned how to do that over the years. You know what I'm saying? He had to go to Miami to get that heart with D-Wade, and D-Wade had to show him how to be a champion. That's why he joined Miami and, you know, and got together and learned how to win. That's why he made the decision to go to Miami with D-Wade. D-Wade won a chip by himself. You know, he carried Shaquille O'Neal when that championship in, uh, over Dallas. You know what I'm saying? By himself, one man won the championship, you know what I'm saying, against Dallas. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, LeBron is, you know, the best of, of this generation, the NBA at this time, but he's not the greatest of all times. And one thing I would say, too, is another thing that I felt, and I maintain up to this day, people could say, you know, this and that all they want, but I do believe that LeBron James left Miami to come back to Cleveland, I feel like he made it seem like he was coming back to Cleveland to, you know, be Moses and lead the Israelites to the promised land, right? <laughs> I think that's what he tried to, you know, sell. But when you look at that year, Miami lost to the Spurs in five. Dwayne Wade was getting older. Chris Bosh had blood clots in his, in his system. And you go to the Cleveland, you have Kyrie Irving, who was emerging. You had a, a number one pick in which you was able to be flexible with that pick, in which you traded to get Kevin Love. So you had a big three automatically when you come back. So if Kyrie wasn't there, he wouldn't have came back. So let's, you know, oh, I, Cleveland, this is for you. I, I, I just don't buy it. I'm not buying it, and I'm not selling it. You know, I think, you know, it happened to be Cleveland where he was from, but Kyrie was there, the number one pick to be flexible. You know, that was a no-brainer to come back to Cleveland at yeah, that time. Yeah, Kyrie was the truth, you know what I'm saying? And Kyrie said, Shot. Think about the seventy-three um, win. You know that, that he's talking about. Kyrie made that shot. Exactly. He made that clutch shot. Exactly. So when Kyrie left, we always should have known LeBron James was out of there. And I know why Kyrie left because Kyrie is like, "Listen, I'm not gonna be second fiddle, all right." And you know, this guy is not gonna be playing. You know, tag on the NBA teams that leaving me here to you know sink and, and and go down. You know, in a draft, like it's not gonna happen. So Kyrie was smart. And when everybody was bashing Kyrie, oh, you know, why are you leaving a player like LeBron James, who is the best player in the world, which he is, why are you leaving him? You know, you're dumb. You're going to win the championship. He was smart. He just got even more lucky that he got traded to a good team in the Celtics that can be able to compete. And it worked out great for the brother. Right. But one thing I would say before I leave this topic, one more thing, one more stat here. LeBron James has lost six finals. Absolutely. Jordan is 6-0. and There it is. There it is. But I'm going to head to my pop culture topics for a little bit before I jump right back into the sports world and give you my playoff predictions with my father here. Um, so I'm going to go right into it. All right. So seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes was killed in a drive-by shooting in Houston All right, by a white guy. I mean, we all know about the history 
and stuff like that of, you know, I don't even got to go into that. But my thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to the family because when I found out about this, you know, there's a lot of things I find out every day. And sometimes some, you know, situations hit me harder than another one might. But I know for a fact this one hit me a little hard. And I was like, you know, I was tight because, you know, this is, this is something that can't happen. I mean, a seven-year-old girl didn't even get, the, you know, a chance to, to, you know, live her life and stuff like that. It, 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 it's just unbelievable. I couldn't even read the articles on this because I'm like, you know, I want to talk about it. And as I was trying to do research, I was like, nah, I can't even, I can't even continue because I was, I was tight. I'm ready to go out to Texas my damn self, all right? But, you know, I, it's nothing I can do. But the only thing I could do is give my condolences to the family. That, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy right there. Um, but moving on, um, Busy Bone threatens 21 Savage on Facebook. And this happened a couple weeks ago. Um, I didn't really get to talk about it, but it was funny to me, so I did, I wanted to talk about it on the show at some point. But Busy Bone threatened 21, 21 Savage on Facebook, right? And as he was doing that with his shotgun in his hand or whatever that was, because I haven't seen that gun in this generation, um, the police knocked on the door and the guy jumped. I mean, the guy was shook. So I got a question for you because, um, you know, you older in age than I am, and you been you know you learned about rap the rap game before i did and the greats you know that we had in the past me i'm a historian i do the research but you was there you was actually living it what are your thoughts on the ogs responding to new cats like you know you have guys like the mumble rappers now that are challenging these ogs talking about i'm better than tupac you know not showing respect right but what are your thoughts on the ogs feeding into that feeding into the the arms um, you know the publicity. Well, I don't think the OGs should uh, feed into that, you know, because y'all work out, uh, the OGs work speaks for itself, you know what I'm saying? You know, I like the old old school hip hop. I like back in the days, you know, I'm from that era, you know, you know, the Melly Mel's, you know, the Cool Mo D's, you know what I'm saying? The cool Two Pies, the Cool G Rap, you know, Fantastic Romantic Five, Cold Crush Brothers, all right? To me, you know, I respect the rap of today, you know, but give me two turntables and a microphone, you know what I'm saying, all day. You know what I'm saying? That's where I grew up on it, and that was, that was the best time in hip-hop. You know, I know they're making more money now, you know, but they set the foundation, you know what I'm saying? They, there's nothing like it, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing like, you know what I'm saying, going to a party, you know what I'm saying, and you got a DJ who's scratching the records, you know what I'm saying? And you got the microphones going, you know, and I, I respect that era better, you know, and they shouldn't feed into the new, new cats and, 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 and go back and forth about who was better, you know what I'm saying, and all that. There's no need for, no need for that. There's no need for violence, no need for that. You know, it's your era now. It's the new guys, they taking it, you know, right now, you know, but they should respect their elders. If it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be no rap. There wouldn't be no hip hop. You know, that's all I got to say about that. I think Busy Bone, he needs to be, you know, a little bit smarter than that, man. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody, nobody right now, a group right now, is touching Bone Thugs and Harmony. All right, so you're already established. Twenty One Savage. I mean, yeah, he made a few couple songs that I probably might tune into when I'm bored, literally with nothing to do and nothing to listen to. But you know, he's nothing compared to that. All right. He, he likes hot sauce in his chicken, and I do too, all right? Tell me something new in a rap lyric. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But I would say this, though. Um, rap now, I feel like, you know, these cats rapping, I feel like it's, it's almost like anybody could be a rapper now. It, that's why, you, you know, every time I'm seeing something, I'm seeing guys I went to school with, everybody trying to be a rapper now. Because it, it's like, you know, rapping is easy. And, you know, you don't even have to be a lyricist in order to be in the game. You could talk about a light. Get a thousand views, and you know you on ninety seven point one, or and this and that. But back then, you know you, you had, had all the lyricists. You wouldn't be able to survive back then. Nah, they'll 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 eat them up. So I really feel that these um young artists right now, they they need to respect the elders, and the OGs need to not feed into everything that's going on right now because they're already established. The catalog is already done and completed. Even though you still got. Cats like Ice Cube that just dropped the album, which was pretty good, um, and stuff like that. And but yeah, 
that's what I got to say about that. So my my new topic that I'm gonna bring up, my new segment here is called Real L. And that basically is the guys that I felt took an L within the last couple of weeks and should be on the hot seat. And those guys or people that I just mentioned early in the show, Busy Bone for doing what he did on social media, feeding into the to the new thing, the new trend of trolling now and stuff like that. When you already established, you on a real L hot seat today. Sorry about that, brother, but guess what, brother? You want it. All right, number two, or Kelly, you know, we just talked about it earlier. He deserves to be on there because we already know what he's doing. He deserves to be on jail, not on my hot seat, on my show. He's supposed to be on, on the jail hot seat, but, you know, fortunately, he's free. He's on this hot seat alone. Kanye West, because Kanye West could be on my hot seat every day, every episode, because of his outlandish statements. And then recently, he just, you know, retweeted his support for Donald Trump. So he's right back where he was a couple of segments, a couple of episodes ago when I was doing this. Kanye West and um, Jimmy Jimmy Butler, he's not on it. You know, I was thinking about putting him on it because of the um the situation with the coach, but you know he's freed because I do understand. But I'm warning him if I see him messing it up with another coach, he's gonna be on his hot seat too. But those are my guys that are on there: All Kelly, Busy Bone, Kanye West, and that's it. So now, ladies and gentlemen, NFL regular season is over. The playoffs are starting to begin. This Saturday at 435, you have the Colts, the Indianapolis Colts, going on the road against the Texans. And before I make these predictions, I want to give a little, you know, a little side, you know, binoculars into this game, right? So the Colts and the Texans, obviously, they split on the season, one each on the road. So those of y'all saying that, you know, the Texans are at home and you're using it as a crotch to go with them. I think that you shouldn't. You know, in most cases, sometimes you pick the home team. That That's in a lot of cases. But in this case, as you see, both teams are good enough to, to win on the road. Both teams have a talented defense. You think about J.J. Watt, who hasn't really been performing to his level that we know him to be, a guy that almost won MVP, but he's right up there. You know, he's starting to get back. He's starting to get his feet wet. Obviously, you had the injuries. Still got Tyrell Matthew on the side of the ball. He can make plays. The Honey Badger, all right? He could do it. And on the Colts, they co the Colts, you know, obviously the Texans have the guys, but the Colts, they play hard. And that's why their defense could be considered better than the Texans, even though the Texans got the, the household names. So what do you like more? Do you like the Sean Watson or the Colts defense in this game before we make our predictions? I don't know. I like the coach defense because Watson, this is his first playoff game. This ain't college. This ain't the – you ain't going against Alabama. This is playoff time, you know, and we'll see if he can do it. You know, I'm not betting against Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck been there, done that. He's been in the playoffs before, you know what I'm saying, and he's playing well. You know, they got a good defense. So, you know, can Houston win it? Sure, you know, but would it shock me if they lose it? And in, in the Colts win it, not at all. Because all weekend, you know, every game, all right, it's a toss-up to me because the visiting team could upset the home team in every game, you know. So that's why I like this weekend for, for a change because usually a wild card weekend, you already know what team going to get blow out or who's favored or whatever. This is the first weekend in a long time, in many years, that you got eight teams that, it can go either way, you know what I'm saying? You could pick, you know, go either way, you know, so that's why I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Deshaun Watson, he's a young quarterback. This is his first time playing in the playoffs. Obviously, he would have played last year had, you know, things didn't happen with him being injured. Right. He would have been there. But one thing I would say, I do believe that, you know, being a, um, your first time, being a rookie in the playoffs, because obviously he's not a rookie, but in the playoffs, he's a rookie. So... Being a rookie in the playoffs, he's obviously going to be nervous. It's, you know, he's going to have to get a couple passes. I expect, you know, a few <laughs> short passes to get him settled into the game. But yeah. one thing I would say, I'm, I'm, I won't count him out because I remember those two national championships. And I know it's college, but mm -hmm. Alabama, they defense, they, it was crazy. And I remember him putting up so much yards in that game, throwing for so much yards. Obviously, we ain't talking the NFL now. The game is different. Obviously, the speed is different. It's an entirely different game. But just that alone has me having confidence in him. But 
it's not about me having confidence yeah. in him. It's about Deshaun Watson having confidence confidence in Deshaun Watson. So we have yet to see, and this, we're going to find out. This 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 is not the regular season. Everything is amped up a hundred percent. This is playoff time. It's coach, you know, and college said that he's that he's the Michael Jordan of NFL quarterbacks. If you if you don't draft him, you're passing up on Michael Jordan. That's what he said coming out of college. All right, this is the time to prove that. All right, this with this is winning time. Now, if you think you're Michael Jordan of quarterbacks, you got to come through Saturday. You got you to get that first one under your belt, and then we see where it goes from there. So who wide receiver, star wide receiver from both teams between T.Y. Hilton and DeAndre Hopkins you think is going to have the best game? I think both of them are going to have a good game. I, think, I know, I know for sure. Both of them gonna have a good I think game. Both of them gonna have a good game because they're the number one guys on both teams. And I don't you know, find a good second option. You Obviously, know. you got Eric Ebron, but other than yeah. that, um, look at the Texans. Who is their second best guy? So. Obviously, they both gonna have good games, but if I had to pick who I think is gonna have more yards per se, it would probably be T. Y. Hilton. But yeah. you know, the Andre Hopkins, he already solidified, in my opinion, to be a top five wide receiver, probably ranked number four behind the yeah. Browns, the um, Julio's, yeah. and the Beckham's. He's right up there with them. Like I said, you know, I'm leaning towards the Colts because of, of luck, of luck. You know, I trust luck, then I, tr I I trust Watson right now. I I, I trust luck against the Texan defense more than I, I trust Watson against the Colts defense. You and, know, even though Texas is at home, you know, even and, though Texas is at home. And one thing I want to do is I want to give a, you know, a nice little shout-out to the offensive line of the Colts because it has improved throughout the course of the year. Tremendously. Yeah. Because you have a guy – I was worried for Andrew Luck. I was, I was really worried for him because of the injuries that he had and that offensive line, I, I thought it was almost like a, another, you know, you got to hold your bread as a fan. If you was a Colts fan, every play, because you did not know what was going to happen. But they pieced it up together. They improved tremendously. I wish the Giants offensive line could improve more, even though they made a little stride saying that they need, still need more improvement. Nice. But I do believe that. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. Both teams, Excellent game. Both teams struggled in the beginning of the year. The Colts were 1-5. It seemed like they was done. The Texans was 0-3. And, and both teams turned around, and now it's time to make the predictions. And for me, I know for a fact it's a 50-50 game, but I'm going to go with the Colts to win this game. 31-24 to is the score that I'm going to give. Uh, I like that. Who you got? I got the Colts. You got a score in your head? Uh, I think the Colts, I think my man, you know, Mr. Mr. Clutch, field goal kicker, Red and Terry, is going to kick him to victory. I got the Colts 30-27 at the buzzer. Moving on to the second game, and I know my dad here is a Cowboys fan, and, you know, all the times watching the games at home, I always had to hear every time they ran, how about them Cowboys? You know, all the time, <laughs> all right? But, you know, we're going to get into it right now. The Seattle Seahawks is at the Cowboys at 8 p.m. on Saturday to close out the Saturday games and which should be a, another 50-50 game because both teams are almost identical. You have Dak Prescott, who's a nice young quarterback, um, who's trying to make strides. Um, Russell Wilson, who's proven to me. I don't know the, the naysayers or the haters of Russell Wilson because he damn sure got a lot. Because people don't be giving him the credit that he deserves. To me, when it's all said and done and Brady yeah. and Breeze and Rodgers yeah. is out of there, it's going to be Russell Wilson and Luck taking over the league. Yeah. But you have two great quarterbacks. You, you, know, you haven't won a game. Let's not forget about Chris Carson. We know about Ezek the Freak. But Chris Carson has emerged this year and gave um, the Seattle Seahawks a good running game, yeah. a good balance. This, is, this, this was a tough draw for the Cowboys. I wish we would have played somebody else because it's like looking in the mirror. It's like fighting your brother. I mean, they're saying. Defense, good defense, both teams, good secondary, both teams, you know, excellent quarterbacks. You know, I trust Wilson more than I trust Prescott. But in the playoff game, Prescott, when he went up head up against Aaron Rodgers, it took a ridiculous throw by Aaron Rodgers. Cowboys would have won that playoff game. You know what I mean? So Prescott did ball out. Now, hopefully he could do it again. But Wilson – Won a Super Bowl, should have won another Super Bowl. I mean, so he's not gonna be he's not gonna be flat. You know, he's not gonna be flat. You know, he's gonna be there. So hopefully Prescott could keep up, 
And like I said, you know, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. I want the Cowboys to win. But would it, would, it, would, it, would it shock me if Seattle wins? No. And I'm telling America today that whoever win that game between Seattle and Dallas, they're going to the Super Bowl. Whoever win that game Saturday night, my prediction is whoever win that game. I want the Cowboys to win. But if, 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 if they don't win and Seattle win, whoever win that game is going to the Super Bowl because they got a complete team. They got good defense. They got a good running game, you know, and they got a good quarterback. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it, you know. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a close game. It's going to go down to the wire, I believe, also. As a Dallas fan, can you explain to the listeners and the people who's going to watch this show when this go up on YouTube how important that trade for Amari Cooper was to your team? That made the team. That made, that made everything go. You know what I'm saying? Because now, you know, so you got somebody that can get down the field and catch the ball, who can get open, who's a good route runner. You know what I'm saying? Got good hands. You know what I'm saying? So once we get that running game going and that play action pass going, Cooper, you know, you saw what he did against Philadelphia by himself. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, you know, I'm more proud of the defense, though, because the Cowboy defense is the truth. You know, and like I said, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game. My thing is, I want to see, before I make this prediction, I want to see what Dak Prescott we're going to get. If we get that Green Bay Packers, Dak Prescott, the Cowboys, probably will end up winning this game. If we don't get half of that, the Cowboys will definitely lose this game. It's a 50-50 pick'em game. Yeah. Um, Doug Baldwin, I'm expecting him to have a good game. Yeah. You know about Tyler Lockett. Exactly. Um, they're going to have a good game. The Seattle is experienced. Exactly. That's and, another thing. Um, they, they're very experienced. Even though the Cowboys you know. been to the playoffs a couple years ago, yeah. they're not as experienced as the Seattle Seahawks is. But like you said, like you said, Prescott got to win that game because – He's going to have to win that game because, you know, Seattle's going to try to shut down Elliott. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They, they gonna, definitely going to try. And, and, and they're going to stock the box, you know what I'm saying? And they're going to try to make Prescott beat him. Prescott's going to have to win that game, you know what I mean? He's going to he gonna have to put it on his shoulders because they're, they're going to take E out the game, you know? So, you know, we know what Wilson could do with his legs. We know what Wilson could do, you know what I'm saying, with his heart. And, and Prescott's going to have to get out there and run. He can't stay in the pocket, can't hold the ball. You know what I mean? If he ain't there, he got to get up out of there and get some yards. He can't, you know, can't fumble the ball. He can't throw no, no picks. You know what I mean? It's, you know, pressure's on. Pressure's on tomorrow. 8, 8 15. Definitely tune in, and it's about time we give our predictions for that game. Um, who do you like in this game? Well, I'm leaning towards the Cowboys. I like the Cowboys. I'm going to ride with them. You know what I'm saying? In, Final score? Uh, close physical Knockout game, uh, Dallas 24-21. All right, I, could, I, I like that. Um, I'm going to go with Seattle on the road. I believe that playoff experience is going to become pivotal. Um, it, would it shock me the Cowboys win? No, um, it wouldn't at all because I do believe the Cowboys is a very good team. But I'm going to take the, the experienced Seattle team, right. a guy in Russell Wilson who's playing tremendous football. I'm going to take that team over the Cowboys 27-24. You know, a mid-range 20 game. Um, that's by a field goal. That's by a field goal. I'm taking Seattle to win that game. All right. Now we move over to Sunday. Um, to cap off your wild card weekend, you have the Chargers. You have two games. And the first game on Sunday, 1 o'clock, is the Chargers at the Baltimore Ravens. And to be honest with you, when you look at all these games, it's 50-50 across the way for me, for all of them. And you had the Chargers at the Ravens. Obviously, they played a couple weeks ago in the Ravens. Did the unthinkable and actually went on the road and beat that hot Chargers team that just beat the Chiefs on the road and everybody thought they were the best AFC team. And that defense that Baltimore has definitely traveled and came to play and Lamar Jackson played his best game that we've seen him all year. And now they home for this game. Now you got the Chargers, who's still a good team, who's still an excellent team. Phillip Rivers is playing his best. Um, to me, he should be in the MVP discussion right along with Pat Mahomes and Drew Brees. Um, obviously, they pieces is coming back. You have Keenan Allen. You have Mike Williams, who could be doing things. You have all these weapons on that team. The running back is going to be back, Melvin Gordon. Um, this is going to be a close game. But do you think Lamar Jackson has what it takes to win this game? You know, yes, he's been on the road. On the road, um, Baltimore has lost one game with him as, well, a, as a starter, even though he didn't finish that game. Do you right. think he has what it takes? Well, we'll see. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is his first playoff game also. 
you know, and the thing about it, San Diego, I mean, not San Diego, Los Angeles Chargers, they saw them. Happens to all of us. They, they, they saw them two weeks ago, you know what I mean? So they know what to expect from uh, Lamar Jackson, you know what I'm saying? So they go, they're going to be much more prepared, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but the Ravens had a good defense, but they, 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 they shocked me a little bit last week. Baker Mayfield was eating them alive last week. They couldn't stop a nosebleed last week. So, you know, I'm worried. worried. I, w I was on the Ravens' defense until last week. Last week, they, they showed a little chink in the armor, you know what I'm saying, against Baker Mayfield. So, Phillip Rivers is, is experienced, you know what I'm saying, and, but he's a sitting duck, you know what I'm saying. He doesn't move around. He's right there in the pocket. But if he can get time, you know what I'm saying, he might do some things this time around that he didn't do it out in California, you know what I mean. It's always up to Lamar Jackson. If he, if he played, you know, if he played, you know, smart, you know what I'm saying, run the ball, you know, and, and pass and don't throw no picks, you know, they might do something. But if he struggled, you know, because some people can't handle that. The first playoff game, they're nervous or whatever, and they've never done it before. You still got a, a former Super Bowl champion on the bench with Flacco. So I can see a scenario where he might be struggling whatever, you know, and they down a couple whatever, and they put Flacco in, and he might, you know, lead him to the victory. You know, look out for that. We all know the Ravens are going to win the football first. That's what they're going to do. Especially, they already done that um, good amount of times in the regular season. But definitely in the playoffs, to set up Lamar Jackson, they're definitely going to do that. So the question is, can the Chargers stop it? Because the last couple of weeks, um, teams knew what, was, what the Ravens were going to do. They wasn't able to stop it. Can the Chargers stop it? It's one thing to know what's coming at you, but can you stop it? Now you see me, now you don't. Can you stop it? I just don't know if they can, but maybe. But you know what? If I'm giving my predictions right now for this game, which I am, I actually, you know, I actually had the Ravens winning the game, but then, you know, more research, the more time I, you know, thought about it, I'm like, listen, Phillip Rivers need this game because Phillip Rivers, he wants to be among the, the Breeze and the Bradys. And games like this, you got to win. Phillip Rivers is missing a championship ring. The closest he ever got was in 07 when the, when the Chargers – um, lost to the Patriots, all right, against Tom Brady. Phillip Rivers needs this game, all right? If you want to be considered among these guys, and you know what? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give the Chargers a, a close win, 34 to 28 on the road to win this game, even though despite the early travel from, to, from West Coast to East Coast for 1 o'clock, despite that, you know, they're going to win, in my opinion. I can, I, can, I can see it. I can see it because uh, you got more experience, and this is best team that you ever had. Oh, your you weapons know, all around if, the if, field. If you, if you don't if you don't do it, you don't do it with this team. You know they ain't gonna be done. You know because he's on his way out. You know what I mean? But and you the Chargers showed that they won on the road. They could win on the road against yeah. Kansas City, against a good Seattle team, against a good Pittsburgh Steelers team. Um, being down twenty three to seven, and that's why I'm going to choose them because I they showed that they definitely could win in the most hostile environments on the road. So you got you got the Chargers, Ravens. Uh, I got the Chargers in a close one. I got the Chargers in a close one. All right, moving on to the final game, the wrap up Sunday's NFL playoff games, ladies and gentlemen. You have the Eagles, the defending champs, who you know needed help to get in. They got it, you know, because Kirk Cousins don't know what to do with eighty four million dollars, and he shouldn't have got it in the first place. If you tuned into my last episode, I aired him out on the show. He was on the hot seat. But nevertheless, the Eagles is on the road against the Bears at 440 to wrap up these wild card games. And, you know, a lot of people is almost making it a lock for the Bears to win this game. But the Eagles are the defending champs. Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. Absolutely. So this is a 50-50 game also. Um, but real quick, I'm going to just go into my predictions. I'm going to take the Bears 24-14 to to win this game at home, um, you know, because I do believe the Bears' defense is going to be – it's already good. Khalil Mack changed that whole franchise with that trade. And, you know, that's a hostile environment right there also. And the Eagles got to go on the road. And I, ju I just believe in the Bears defense. Mr. Jabisky, that's going to be the X factor. What, what game are we going to get from him? All he needs to do is make the necessary plays. And if he does that, I, I got the Bears winning this game 24-14. to 14. Well, I'm going with the champs. You know what I'm saying? You got to knock the champs out. And if you have, if you give me, if you ask me who would I trust, Nick Foles or Trevinsky, who had never done it, who's shaky, he's been shaky all year. The defense has been carrying him. I'm going with Nick Foles. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm going with Nick Foles. Even though the crowd going to be crazy, it might be snowing. You know what I'm saying? But Tredrisky to me is like a deer in headlights. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's going to be too, too much pressure on him. You know, and he's going to give it up. You know, I'm going with the champs. You know, they got good defense. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Nick Foles, there's something about him, man. You know what I'm saying? Even though he did, he did all that damage at home in the playoffs. I mean, he beat L.A. in the playoffs on the road. But, you know. Be the good Atlanta Falcons. You know, he, he, too. exactly. But, like I said, I just think it's going to come down to Tavinsky or Foles. And I got to go with Foles. I got to go with Foles. So, I'm, I'm looking for Philly to upset Chicago. I like the Bears because of their defense. You know, obviously I believe Foles is the better quarterback out of the two, and I believe he's going to have the better game out of the two. But when you think about how the Bears, you know, shut down high-potent offices this year, you know, with the Rams, they, they won that game Absolutely. and stuff like that. Yeah. I do believe that Chabrisky only has to not mess it up. He could be a game manager in that game, you know, a little bit above that, making the key necessary plays at the end just for them to win that game with that defense that well, he had. Like I said, I don't think, you know, like I said, it's going to be tough, you know, but you got Cox, you know what I'm saying? You got my man Bennett, you play for Seattle, you know what I'm saying? They're going to wreck that, that, that offensive line, you know, and put pressure on Trubinsky, and he's going to throw a couple of picks, I believe, you know? I mean, you know the, the Bears defense is going to be good, but, you know, if you get the ball out two steps before Khalil get there, you know, you might have a chance. They, they, they got to do that quick passing, you know, but you can't stay in the pocket three, four, five steps because they, their defense are too tough, you know. So I'm going with the champs, though. And those are our NFL playoff predictions. And to close out this show, we're going to give you our national championship predictions. As you do know, um, the Clemson Tigers versus the Alabama Clemson Tide um, on Monday, uh, 8, 8 o'clock on ESPN, Dexter Lawrence is out. He's not going to play. That's a you know a pivotal guy. But Clemson has shown that they can. Their defensive line could be good without him. Obviously against Notre Dame, they, you saw what they can do. Albert Huggins came in, did his thing. But in a game like this against uh, against Alabama, you really want to have all your best plays, even if you're good without him. You want to have. You want to be full ammunition, ready and gear. And that's a, that might come. That might hurt them a little bit. But I do like Trevor Lawrence. This cat is going to be the real deal. This guy is unbelievable. This guy, Trevor Lawrence, is, you know, he's very accurate with the ball. He throws a nice, good, deep ball. And, you know, he can move. He's a little mobile. And I like that. I like, I, you know, you saw what um, Deshaun Watson has done to that team over the course of the um, championships in the past couple of years. Even though Trevor Lawrence is no Deshaun Watson, he's still a good quarterback. And I do believe Clemson has a chance. I, do, I don't think by any means of the necessary this is going to be a blowout. Clemson is experienced with this team. How many years? What, four straight years they played each other? So Clemson has what it takes to beat Alabama. They do. And I'm not going to count them out by any means. It's just that when you look at this Alabama team, you have Tolua in an offense that Alabama pretty much never had in you know, Nick Saban's history, You know this high-flying offense to go along with that high-flying defense. And that's just going to be hard to overcome. So, um, but before we make these predictions, Hunter Redfo is going to be his last game. Um, you know, he's a good wide receiver. He reminds me of Wes Welker on the football field. He made that key championship touchdown with Deshaun Watson threw it to him on the end, in the end zone. It's going to be his last game. I expect a good game from him because that's going to be a guy in the slot. And you want to get the ball out your hands. And I do believe they're going to do that. Justin Ross had six receptions and 148 yards and two touchdowns in his last game against Notre Dame. I do believe that we need a game like that for them to win this game too. A game like that, he's going to have to step up to the plate. But Tolua, you saw what they did against Oklahoma. Who you got in this game? Roll Tide. Yeah. Alabama going with the chance. Going with the chance. It's going to be a good game. It shouldn't be no blowout like you said. Uh, Clemson is a good top, uh, good team, but uh, you know this rookie they got, you know Lawrence, you know true freshman, you know what I'm saying. We're gonna see what he's made of. We're gonna see what he's made of. I mean, he's so far so good, but he's going against my man Tua, and Alabama got that defense. They got a good running game, and it's gonna be a. Finally, we're gonna get a nice little championship. 
not like the the, the playoffs. You're gonna get a nice little championship. Was, playoffs was you know what I mean? It's gonna be a nice little championship, so you can sit back and enjoy. It's gonna be a good game. But I got I got the tired winning it. You know what I'm saying? You know by ten. I think it's gonna be a touchdown. Probably I probably look at the lens of 30, 38 to thirty one. But you know the saying goes, "Light father, like son." Roll tide. <laughs> And that's who I'm going with. And that wraps up another brand new episode of The Real Lil Show, episode 10. And when I'm back for episode 11, oh yeah, we taking things off. It's almost like we're going to heaven. I'm out. One love.